Well, I don't know if we're all getting more and more impatient, but those budget speeches seem to get longer and longer. Well, if there's one thing we can say about that budget presentation, in my experience, I think the finance minister was today in top form. He spoke, I think, with more passion and intent than I've heard him in a long time. Perhaps the single biggest aim is clearly in this budget to boost the economy by focusing on infrastructure, investment allowance, uh, industrial corridors, new ports, shale gas, small enterprises get a boost, capital infusion into banks, and that smart move, first ever women's bank. How much all of this will be implemented properly is another question, but that we'll look at later. <laughs> at least the intent is there. Now he started his speech by admitting that the Indian economy is challenged. Is that an understatement or not? In fact, this budget was presented in the face of two huge challenges. Challenge number one, the Indian economy is in the midst of a crisis of gloom, pessimism and slow growth, matched only, if you ask me, by the crisis of 81, 91 and 2001. The 10 year cycle has hit us again. And the finance minister, has he done his bit to fight this latest economic crisis? That's one question we'll be asking. You can't expect miracles from a budget, but you can expect a signal or a sign of determination. The previous three crises were all followed by big ticket reforms. In fact, it's said that India only hits the reform button after the economy has first hit the panic button in a crisis. We don't react otherwise. Well, we are in a crisis again. I hope this government realizes that. Does this budget suggest that we will get the reforms this time as well? The second big budget, uh, challenge, of course, is this budget is in the face of the coming Lok Sabha elections in 2014. Was this an election budget? And does the challenge of elections and politics contradict the challenge of reforms? To answer these questions with us, we have a most amazing collection of brilliant minds and these are not just theoretical brilliant minds brilliant minds these each one of them have acted implemented and created jobs and assets that have built the new india this is the new india that we look forward to and look towards to get india back on a high growth path and get us out of poverty with me to get answers and a perspective on this budget is my colleague shweta rajpal kohli for me, the finest business journalist in India today, mark my words. And all of you watching, you have an opportunity to participate with us in all this using NDTV's second screen technology. Just get hold of your phone or tablet and send in your questions and the best question will float up to the top and be asked right here. Let me just start with Arun Shori. Two challenges boost the economy, get it out of this gloom and slow growth, and elections. Has he done a good balancing job, or has he failed in both? Uh, well, no, I couldn't say failed or anything, but as you can see the reactions, initial reactions, you know, there was, um, he himself acknowledged that the problem has not been the lack of a provision or of expenditure or of a particular tax, but the return of uncertainty among investors. And I would be surprised if investors now feel reassured on that count. There's only one announcement which um, said something definite to reassure them, and that is that on GAR, he is now going to incorporate the things which he has done, uh, um, which he has announced, which were very good things in the last two, right. three months. But other than that, for instance, on the arbitrariness of tax administration, all he has been able to assure is another commission. Similarly, on boosting, you rightly said that he has listed a number of things on infrastructure. They are not new things, including connectivity in the Northeast, for instance, is a proposal for a long time, including ADB's interest in this matter. The one thing that I was asking Sumanth just now about the manufacturing sector is this allowance about for companies that are going to invest more than 100 crores in plant and machinery. Right. But other than that, you know, it's really, uh, you have to look, look very far to see what is it that is actually boosting uh, and attending to the problem which he has himself identified in regard to confidence and to outlays or, uh, which should boost manufacturing. 
I would have thought, for instance, that instead of this Dhobi list, if he could have spelt out policies, defense production to be opened up to the private sector. Anthony was talking about it. No mention in the budget. <coughs> yes, that's well, a big miss, actually. Well, yes. those are the types of things which should have actually assured people. Uh, Mr. Soni was just now talking about the sugar industry and decontrol. Uh, and he said that that would be an important uh, signal. We don't see that. So if you just went back, but Shweta was asking the industry before we started, right. uh, you would have to uh, request Mr. Chidambram for a supplementary budget speech. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, not everything comes in a budget. Uh, there will be supplementary policy well, decisions. But was there but any no, signal of reform in this budget, Vikram? You know, I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with uh, Arun. I, I struggle here. I, I mean, he started brilliantly, I thought, by identifying the issues. And I thought that, you know, we're really going to focus now on a budget that establishes without any equivocation the growth path, as well as contains inflation, as well as sets out the roadmap for, a fiscal, uh, for the fiscal sort of uh, deficit. At the end of it all, uh, I am not sure that what we have seen is going to reinvigorate investor sentiment. There are some measures, I'm not like sure, what? certainly in the oil and gas sector. Shale the, gas, you've got... Well, you know, this is it. I was just going to say, the measures that he's announced uh, don't actually lead to an enthusiastic response. Uh, profit sharing has been replaced by revenue sharing. This Is, is that a good time, move? No, it isn't, because this is at a time when all of our oil and gas reserves are being found in very harsh ge geologies, in deep waters, where possibly one well could cost as much as $50 million. The risks are high, the rewards are uncertain. So re companies don't w are going to invest if they're pretty much assured that in the event of a, a discovery, they're going to be able to recover their costs. But, but uh, Vikram, and the issue there of profit what go, What are the costs you include? All the I know, but you, you see, know, it's, doesn't this just simplify things? Percentage of revenues depends on the percentage. Well, the point is that the once you guys get revenues, you make a lot of profits. No, no, no. But no, the difference between revenue sharing and profit sharing is that you're able to recover your costs before you start to share the profit. Yeah, but do people put now, inflated costs? Well, That's this is it. Question. All over the world, this particular model works, and there are very clear guidelines and for what you include. for how you audit the cost. International auditors will lose their credibility if they were to inflate the costs. Now, we can do that in India too. I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't see why we can't ensure standards. that the costs are not gold-plated. Right. Right.